It's no secret that the MMO market is a strange, fickle creature when it comes to upcoming titles. Some titles may keep fans up to date with the minute details of development, whereas others may focus on the development as a whole and provide press releases, which are few and far between. Whether either are the case, the MMO scene has now been greeted by the official announcement of another title first announced back in 2021, under the name of Pax Day. The MMO was announced to be a cloud-based sandbox venture under the guiding eye of Microsoft, but now the developers have divulged a long-awaited real trailer, but also an official announcement which has allowed developers to release their ideas into the world. To that end, let's take our own initial journey into the lands of the Divine Peace, looking into these ideas and seeing whether or not the first impressions of the game show grace or show folly for this upcoming MMO. But first, we need to clarify on what PAX Day intends to be. Well, from the outset, the developers have come in strong by saying that the game is going to be a social-focused sandbox experience, and if anything, the developers have doubled down on this aspect. Citing from one of the developers themselves, they go as far as stating that sandbox MMOs are the holy grail of the MMORPG experience, which does give us a strong indication on the importance they place on this style being part of the experience. Players start in the Heartlands, an area protected by this divine peace, which allows them a safe haven to focus their efforts either alone or with friends. Players then set off into the wilderness of the Uncharted Lands, an area that intends to offer excitement for both PvE and PvP experiences. Such adventures will naturally give players access to the rarer materials that they can then take home to craft, which incentivizes the players further, seeing as they are the sole economic force of the game, as it's slated to have a fully player-driven economy. Personally, I like the juxtaposition between having a safe area and an unsafe area in these sort of environments. And this consistent safe zone allows for player infrastructure and buildings which are planned, which will likely have a key part in a solo experience or clan or group development. The world itself reflects the changes between the safe and the unsafe, with the soft ambience of the heartlands differing from the sinister vibes of the uncharted wilds, which are likely to be filled with all manner of creatures and magic that are inspired by our folklore. The developers have also pushed this idea about the fact that the world is alive even further, with NPCs going about their business and showing players the wider narrative at play, with the example that they give during the video of an idea of soldiers going to war. In all, the dedication towards producing a living, breathing world supported of the sandbox experience and allowing for the various styles of gameplay with a focus on the player is certainly an admirable goal in today's market. But even with these intentions, a game cannot be a game without the technical aspects in play. Pax Day is going to be run on the Unreal 5 engine, allowing for an incredible amount of detail and design as mentioned by the developers and shown throughout the footage. This is not an unlikely decision, seeing as Ashes of Creation, another in-development MMO, also announced a switch onto this engine, potentially drawn in by the benefits on offer. It will certainly be an interesting experience to see how the game translates into the Unreal Engine upon release, but how does this also translate across into the other avenues that PAX Day wishes to explore? Well, whilst having the PC as the primary focus or platform for the game, the developers will already have prototypes for alternative platforms up and running, as evidenced during the official announcement. This is then coupled with their design ideals, with the ultimate goal being that they want to have the game playable on any device, allowing for players to engage with the game and not be confined to playing the game on a high-powered gaming PC. Whether this intent firmly links into their original selling point of this game being a cloud-based MMORPG, this influence of allowing those of a more casual nature to engage and play if they are able to use the game on a mobile or tablet device certainly opens the game up to a wider market. And with a focus towards allowing a wider variety of individuals to be involved in this game, the developers hope that PAX Day can be experienced by all, whether it be the hardcore dedicated MMORPG player, down to the casual player who may have a few moments to spare whilst out and about. PAX Day has certainly struck a chord with me with their focus on the social sandbox experience and it is certainly a worthwhile endeavour to attempt to provide all players with an element of their own gameplay style. While we have yet to see any further definitive details on the game systems, bar what we see in the video so far and what we could see in future testing, I would always lean towards being sceptical on if a game will try to truly encompass all elements of gameplay. 
this skepticism is based on the idea that some feel that an MMO needs to have all elements, such as PvE and PvP, in some variety, rather than just making a natural focus on one element or the other. By the developer's own words, they acknowledge that the MMO they may create will not be the one that will be there in 10 years' time, which is reassuring to hear. Many attempt in this sort of process to grasp at their old glories when further developing the game, leading to a focus on nostalgia rather than innovating the product they have. But, from my opinion of the release information for PAX Day so far, I feel that there will be a good niche for the game to sit into. The ideal of base building for personal or clan usage does touch on the grand idea of forming an actual permanent presence in the game, a feature that is often missing, or if implemented, feels somewhat limp. The safe Heartlands will naturally cater to the more casual individual or the PvE oriented folks, whilst the less safe lands beyond will naturally challenge those who are interested in PvE, PvP, or just interested in the greater challenge as a whole. My only concern so far is the aspect of cross-platforming the game, as we've heard that they intend to do from release. After all, many games less complicated than an MMO suffer from a lack of optimization and polish at launch, and I always feel a little reserved when a game feels the need to push the game into all markets as soon as possible. However, should the dedication of the team push through this element and provide the relevant polish, I would no doubt say that the game would be one to look forward to in the next few years. And if you are interested in the game, they are currently taking applications for their alpha test sessions, which I will have a link to their website in the description down below. But what are your initial thoughts for PAX Day? Let me know down in the comments below what your thoughts and feelings are for this potentially cross-platforming MMORPG. This has been Revelry, and I hope to see you again soon. Take care.